battling the forces of evil. They are Conan and the Young Warriors. Conan and the Young Warriors, a mature mentor version of Conan that you haven't witnessed before. Before the era of streaming services, we relied solely on television and cable channels to watch cartoons and series for entertainment. We all grew up watching these animated cartoons, and they made up a significant part of our childhood. Today, we will be exploring the 1994 cartoon called Conan and the Young Warriors, which was a sequel to the 1992 Conan the Adventurer series. Each one possesses a star stone, which gives them special power. The show showed us a new side to Conan, who has taken a break from solo adventures, and now assists young warriors who are destined to rule Hyboria one day. Let us dive into the details of this show set in the ancient Hyborian Age, and explore everything there is to know about Conan and the young warriors. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's Let's begin. What was the show all about? Conan and the Young Warriors first aired in 1994, and it was a sequel to the animated Conan the Adventurer series. The creators introduced many new characters in this sequel, and it was considered to be a children's TV series in the fantasy genre. It followed Conan's life after the Wrath Amon was vanquished, as he was handed the task of training a trio of young warriors known as the Chosen Ones. The show was set in the Hyborian Age, a fictional setting that served as the base for the tales of Conan the Barbarian. It was created by Michael Reeves, and directed by Jost Grust, and it aired on the CBS network. Conan and the Young Warriors lasted for just one season, and consisted of a total of 13 episodes. Philip Hayes voiced Conan's character, and other important voice actors for the show included Mark Hildreth as Dragon, Kelly Sheridan as Bryn, and Shiara Zani as Nava. Let us explore the story arc in detail, and have a look at the first few episodes of this show. but now you must deal with me! <laughs> Exploring the first few episodes and the overall story arc, the show kicked off with an episode titled The Third Talisman, where we are introduced to the young warriors. The narrator talks about the Chosen Ones, who will one day rule the land of Hyboria, and tell us that Conan has been assigned the task of training these young warriors. The Chosen Ones consist of Dragon, Bryn, and Nava, and they are all given a Star Stone that gives each of them a special power. Nava has the ability to communicate with animals, while Bryn can create illusions. Dragon, the oldest of the trio has the power to wear an invincible suit of armor that makes him undefeatable in combat. Together, Conan assists the young warriors in battling the forces of evil. As the episode begins, the Chosen Ones train with Conan, and Nava has some difficulty with the training. He dejectedly tries to give up, but Conan tells him that a warrior never gives up, and that he will get better with practice. Nava has a pet mongoose, Tiki, and is only eight years old. Bryn teases Nava about being the youngest of the group. When Epimetrius appears out of thin air, he is a wise sage, and he tells the Chosen Ones that they are going to undertake a new challenge today. Conan asks him about this challenge, and Epimetrius only tells them to travel towards the east and break the prison of clay. Travel toward the east and break the prison of clay. Dragon realizes they will be passing by Sulanara's castle in the east, and Conan tells the trio to start packing for this trip. In the meantime, Sulanara summons a strange being from another world and orders it to bring the Chosen Ones to her. She is determined to get her hands on the Star Stones, and will go through any length to acquire them. On another side, the Chosen Ones fill their water skins from a river in the middle of the wilderness, when this strange being spots them. He returns to Sulanara, gives up their location, and asks her to free him from this world. However, However, Sulinara seems to have changed her mind, and she traps his spirit in a clay bottle instead of freeing him. Sulinara then demands her dragon, Grok, to take her to the wilderness while the Chosen Ones hurry to return to Conan. However, they run into trouble with two goons who try to steal their Star Stones. Dragon tries to attack them, but his advances fail against the two men. Finally, Nava's pet mongoose bites one of these men, and then Bryn casts an illusion that causes the men to see a bear instead of a mongoose. They flee the scene, while Dragon praises Bryn's illusions. Conan wonders what has taken them so long to fill their water skins while Sulanara and her dragon spots the trio. She immediately lunges at Dragon and tries to grab his star stone. Sulanara manages to get her hands on the stone and then targets the other two when Conan appears at the scene. Conan tells the trio to be more careful, and they return to the castle ruins to spend the night. They intend to leave at first light, but Dragon wakes up in the middle of the night and tries to sneak out to get his star stone back. Bryn insists on going with him, while Nava stays back with Conan. Somehow. I'm coming with you. 
Brynn, it's much too dangerous. At Sulinara's castle, she orders her dragon to return to the wilderness and search for the Chosen Ones. She thinks that the Chosen Ones wouldn't expect another attack so soon, so it is ideal to attack them immediately. Grak does not wish to go, but Sulinara uses her powers to trick him into going. The following day, Conan asks Nava about the whereabouts of the other two warriors. Nava tells him that he is not supposed to tell, but Conan insists on knowing since they could be in danger. Nava tells Conan the truth, and they both set out to search for Dragon and Brynn. In the meanwhile, Grak spots Dragon and Brynn, and they end up in a fight. Brynn uses her illusions to trick the dragon, and they quickly escape. Grok returns to the castle to tell Sunanara that he located two of the warriors, and she calls him a fool for not returning back with their starstones. She orders Grok to take her to them, and then orders the dragon to take away Brynn's starstone. Though touching the starstone will burn Grok's skin, he obeys Sulanara's orders, and it is clear that she has trapped this dragon under a spell. Dragon tries to attack Grok, but Sulanara uses her powers to deflect his attack. Grok finally gets the starstone, but it burns his skin, and he needs aid before the infection spreads across his body. Sulanara contemplates whether to go after the last stone or to save Grok, and then realizes that she needs Grok alive so that he can aid her in future missions. They return to her palace while Brynn and Dragon hang off a cliff while hiding from them. Conan and Nava come to their rescue and learn that Sulanara has taken away the second star stone as well. Conan tells them that if Sulanara gets the third star stone, then darkness will be at her command. He decides to break into Sulanara's castle with the Chosen Ones and is determined to get the star stones back. Nava's amulet, and then all Hyboria will be under her heel. Conan's right, I say. Nava tries to suggest a plan, but Dragon dismisses him. Conan then tells Dragon to let Nava speak, and Nava sends his pet mongoose, Tiki, to find a crack in the fortress. Tiki manages to open the castle gates, and the group enters the palace. Here, Conan comes across the clay bottle in which Sulanara has trapped the spirit, and he wonders if this is the clay prison that Epimetrius spoke of. He breaks it open, thereby freeing the spirit that Sulanara trapped. The spirit tells him that Sulanara forced him to do her bidding when the evil sorceress herself appears at the scene. A fight breaks out between Sulanara and Conan, and the spirit intervenes and stuns Sulanara and Grak. While Sulanara momentarily loses her ability to move around, the Chosen Ones take back their star stones and start running away from the castle. Sulanara sends her forces of evil skeletal spirits to attack them, but Conan fights them off while the young warriors return to safety. As the episode comes to an end, Conan and the Chosen Ones bicker among themselves and return to their training. In the next episode, titled Arena, Conan gets into trouble while he and the young warriors try to free a city from an evil ruler. The episode begins with the group sitting by a campfire in a jungle when a wild bear sneaks up on them. Conan scares the bear away, while Brynn and Nava hide behind him. Dragon makes fun of them for hiding from danger, and Conan interrupts him by saying that sometimes retreating is the sensible thing for a warrior to do. Epimetrius then appears out of thin air and tells them that sometimes the best way to face danger is from a distance. He then gives them a new task, and tells them about a nearby village where the ruler treats his subjects like slaves. Epimetrius tells them to free these villagers from the rule of the this evil tyrant when some of the king's warriors show up and attack Conan and the warriors. They manage to escape, but then fall into a booby trap set up by the warriors. Conan uses his sword to cut through the ropes, but more of the king's warriors surround them and ask Conan to hand over his sword. Nava tells Tiki to escape while Conan and his warriors are taken to the king. The king introduces himself, and he is enraged by the fact that they have trespassed on his land. The king singles Conan out and decides to send the children to work in the quarry. The king's guards confiscate their belongings and one of the guards eyes the Star Stones. Conan and the warriors are taken to a room where one of the citizens gets them some food and tells them that he was once a proud citizen, but is now only a slave to the king. Conan wishes he had a sword, while the citizen also tells Conan that the champion of the tournament will be the only one to have a sword. The barbarian will fight in the arena for Kuda's amusement. By crumb, let me get a sword in my hands. In the meantime, the Chosen Ones are sent to work in the quarries, where they come across large amounts of magical powder. One of the citizens tells them that these are magical powders used by the evil sorceress Sulanara, and that she is due to arrive to collect these stocks of powder soon. Brynn worries that things have just gotten a lot worse when the scene shifts to the arena. A tall, monstrous man defeats two of his opponents while Conan watches from afar. A man tells Conan that it will be his turn in the arena the next 
next day, and he returns to their room. The Chosen Ones soon return, and they tell Conan that Sulinar is expected to arrive in the city soon. Conan declares that they must escape as soon as possible. He tries to think of a plan to recover his sword and the Star Stones. Their new friend in the city shows them a tunnel that takes them from the locked room to the room where they have kept the Star Stones. Conan moves the rocks covering this tunnel when the King's men appear in the room and ask for Conan's presence in the arena. He tells the Chosen Ones not to worry and to carry out their plan while he fights in the arena. They cross the tunnel and enter the storeroom where they find countless treasures and jewels. They find Conan's sword and one of the Star Stones when a guard enters the room. They leave the place through the tunnel, but the guard notices the entrance to the tunnel and follows the Chosen Ones to their locked room. Dragon overpowers the guard and then steals his keys. The Chosen Ones escape with the sword and one of the stones while they leave the guard trapped in the room. They are accompanied by the citizen they met on the first day, and he sets off to free the other citizens from the dungeons. In the meantime, Sulinara flies to the city on Grok and comes across the Chosen Ones. She tells Grok to get their star stones, but the dragon backs off when she spots Conan's swords. Since Nava is the only one to have his Star Stone. He uses his power to summon Tiki, and the animal attacks Sulinara. The Chosen Ones use this distraction to escape Sulinara, who sends Grak after them. She even goes to the king and demands that he find the Chosen Ones and bring them to her. Conan finally steps into the arena, and he manages to defeat his opponents by flinging his armor at them. Finally, he escapes the arena and runs into the Chosen Ones, who return his sword to him. They return to the storeroom to get their Star Stones back, and then prepare to escape the city. Sulinara and Grak fly over the city and try to locate them, while Conan and the Chosen Ones also find themselves cornered by some soldiers. Conan gets his hands on some of the magic dust collected in the quarry, and he causes an explosion. Sulinara notices the explosion and locates Conan, and the two fight briefly before Conan manages to drive her away. The group also manages to free all the people under the king's rule, and they all cheer for him as the episode comes to an end. The show's third episode is titled Dreamweaver, wherein Sulinara uses her powers to send nightmares to to the Chosen Ones. Nava dreams about being chased by a vicious dragon, and he starts screaming in his dreams. Conan wakes him up from his nightmare, and Bryn gives him a special sleep stone that would help him sleep better. Conan then tells the Chosen Ones to get ready for training, and that they will be so tired by the end of the day that they won't have any dreams. As Nava gets out of bed, he realizes that this was no ordinary dream, and that there is a scar on his chest at the same place where he was attacked in the nightmare. A blindfolded dragon fights against Conan as part of his training, and he soon gets the hang of it. Bryn then tries to fight Conan while being blindfolded, but she struggles to grasp his technique. Epimetrius then makes an appearance and asks Nava if something is bothering him. Later that night, Nava is afraid to go to sleep, but Bryn consoles him and puts him into bed. However, she herself has a nightmare that night and faces terrible monsters in this dream. Conan suggests a hike the next day so the Chosen Ones can clear their head a little. Nava notices that Bryn's ring fell off her hand in her sleep, and she tells him that it fell off when the creature in her dream tried to take it. From me, who took it? The, the creatures in my dream. Conan and the warriors go on the hike, but Bryn and Nava lose their balance and fall off the cliff. They cling to a branch for support while Tiki rushes to Conan for help. Conan and Dragon rescue them, and they return from the hike. Later that night, Dragon also has the same nightmare as Bryn and Nava. Nava and Bryn realize that Bryn's star ring is gone, and they wake Conan up. They also discover that Dragon is missing, and Conan realizes that Sulinara has trapped Dragon in the dream world. He decides to visit the sorcerer known as Dreamweaver for some help with the situation. Dreamweaver then opens a portal to the dream world, and he warns Conan that they must go through the portal and rescue Dragon quickly. If they don't return before the portal closes, they will be trapped in the dream world forever. They quickly find Dragon, and then try to fight against Sulanara and all her monstrous creatures. Conan reminds the Chosen Ones that they can control this dream world, just as well as Sulanara, and they do their best to fight her off and escape before the portal closes. Bryn ends up trapped in the dream world, but she manages to get her star ring back, and then uses its powers to open the portal again and escape the dream world. In the next episode, titled Carnival of Cardolus, Conan and the young warrior set out in search of a basilisk, whose scales are effective as an antidote for all sorts of poisons. While they look for the basilisk, the group spots a carnival. The carnival master, Cardolus, wishes to capture this basilisk himself, and he sends creatures from the carnival party to look for it. Nava and Bryn insist on seeing the carnival, and Bryn also needs someone to fix her bow. Nava and Dragon explore the carnival, 
while Bryn and Conan go around the lake to find tamarind sticks for her bow. Cardola sees Nava use his powers and asks his forces to capture him and Dragon. Conan and Bryn return to the campsite, but they discover that the carnival has already left. They have also trapped Dragon and Nava in their cages, and Cardolist intends to send Nava to capture the basilisk, since he can communicate with animals. Bryn and Conan catch up with them, and Cardolus orders his men to capture them as well. The basilisk finally approaches the campsite, and Cardolus orders his men to capture it. Conan breaks himself free from the cage, and then frees the Chosen Ones as well. They fight along with Cardolus's men to subdue the basilisk, and they reach an agreement not to fight anymore. Cardolus then tries to escape with the gold savings of the carnival, but Conan and the Chosen Ones get the gold back and even trap Cardolus in a cage. In the fifth episode titled Isle of the Lost, Sulanara gets her hands on a stone that can transform people into mindless monsters. In the meantime, Conan and the Chosen Ones go to a local market to shop, and one of Conan's old friends, Sakura, steals Bryn's money purse. Sakura then makes an excuse, and Conan lets him get away with it. Sakura also tells Conan that he is searching for a gem known as the Spirit Keeper, and that he will use this money to get information about where to find this gem. Meanwhile, Sulanara uses her Power Stone to turn people into monstrous creatures. Sakura later returns and asks for Conan's help, while locating the Spirit Keeper gem. He has information that the gem can be found at the Isle of the Lost, a place full of monsters from where no human ever returns. While the Chosen Ones get on the boat, Conan and Sakura face a warrior. Sakura does not fight him and only watches from afar as Conan defeats this warrior and then makes his way to the ship. Sakura wishes them luck from the shore, and Conan and his warriors set out on their journey across the sea. Epimetrius also makes an appearance and warns them that appearances can be deceiving. Conan! Epimetrius! Is there no place we can be free? Sulinara sends the mindless monsters to look for the Chosen Ones and sends Grok to supervise these creatures. The monsters corner Conan and the Chosen Ones, but they are pretty mindless, and Conan manages to talk them into becoming allies. Conan promises to free these creatures from Sulinara's control in exchange for their help locating the Spirit Keeper. In the meantime, Grok returns to Sulinara and informs her that the monsters have sided with Conan. However, Sulinara is not worried since no one has managed to pass the Citadel without falling into its traps. She also has the Spirit Keeper gem stored safely within the Citadel to ensure no one uses it against her. Conan and the Chosen Ones manage to cross all the obstacles and traps in the Citadel. They finally reach Sulinara and find Sakura chained to the wall. Sulinara now intends to turn him into a mindless monster, but Conan spots the Spirit Keeper crystal and uses it against her. He then breaks the crystal, thereby freeing the spirits of all the humans who had been turned into monsters by Sulinara. Sulinara then flees the scene and swears that one day she will manage to trap Conan's spirit. In this way, Conan and the Chosen Ones went on many adventures and often fought against Sulinara through the show. Each one possesses a star stone, which gives them special powers. Some memorable characters who made the show entertaining. The show's main protagonists were Conan and the Chosen Ones, and they had other supporting characters such as Epimetrius. Conan was considered to be a sword and sorcery hero, which is a subgenre under the fantasy theme. This essentially means that Conan was a sword-wielding hero who went on many adventures where he came across princesses and wizards. Conan belonged to the legendary Hyborian Age and was a Sumerian blacksmith's son. He was a headstrong, loyal warrior who first started going on adventures at the age of 15. He was also quite chivalrous in nature, and often saved the damsels in distress, and avoided fighting women. His appearance was softened for this animated series, and he can be described as a tall, dark-haired, well-built barbarian. Conan always carried a sword on his back, and was dressed in a loincloth in most of his appearances. Conan had an immense physical strength and endless stamina, and could go days without sleep. He was also quite the strategist when it came to using his brains to defeat his opponents. He also had a knack for deciphering strange strange signs and secret codes, and had advanced knowledge of various languages. Conan often sought advice from Epimetrius, a wise sage who is one of the few original characters that appeared even in the original Conan the Adventurer series. Epimetrius was also the one to choose the Chosen Ones of Hyboria, who could wield the Star Stones. He also helped Conan train the Chosen Ones and gave them some direction in their adventures. The Chosen Ones included Dragon, Bryn, and Nava. 
Dragon was the oldest in the trio, and he had grown up in a region known as Aquilonia. Dragon's Starstone was fixed to his bandana, and it gave him the ability to magically wear an invincible armor. Bryn was the only girl on the team of Chosen Ones, and she spent her early life as a thief and Shadazar. Her Starstone was fitted on her ring as a jewel, and it gave her the power to create illusions to trick their opponents. Finally, Nava was the youngest Chosen One, and he was only 8 years old. He was brought up in the Picked Eagle tribe, and his Starstone dangled from a pennant around his neck. Nava's Starstone gave him the ability to control animals, and he even had a pet mongoose called Tiki. Conan and the Chosen Ones often faced Sulinara, a half-serpent and half-human who was the series' main antagonist. Sulinara was a power-hungry being, and she was obsessed with collecting all the Starstones. She wished to rule Hyboria, and often went up against the Chosen Ones to get her hands on the Starstones. She had a wicked demon, Grok, who helped her in stealing the stones. the forces of evil. Marvelous Verdict an innocent version of Conan, but thoroughly enjoyable. Conan and the Young Warriors was an adventurous animated series that was filled with mystical creatures, evil villains, and a ton of magic and fantasy themes. Though it was not the most popular show of the 90s, it certainly had its moments and managed to keep the viewers entertained. Fans of the original Conan the Adventurer expected to see more of Conan's adventurous side, but the show focused mainly on the Chosen Ones, which came as a bit of a disappointment to Conan fans. However, this series was was filled with adventure and thrilling plot lines of its own, and it did capture the attention of young viewers especially. The show definitely had the potential to grow into something bigger, but it lasted for about 13 episodes. The show's animation was also pretty good. The voice actors did a decent job of bringing the characters to life. The show's theme was more suited for children, and a lot of violence depicted in the original series was toned down in this version. Conclusion. To sum it up, Conan and the Young Warriors definitely made for a fun watch and managed to keep the viewers entertained throughout the show. It was a complete package of adventure, magic, and fun, and the show had quite the potential to become an even wider success. Though it was not as popular as the original Conan series, it was still quite a hit with the viewers and had quite some fan following. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Each one possesses a star stone, which gives them special powers of the Phoenix. Nava.